Hi, you're very welcome to us today in, uh, in, in Mayo. Uh, my name is Seamus and today we're talking about the Oka. Oka is originally from South America and the Andes and the Inca, Incas would have one of the food crops that they would have been dependent upon would be the Oka. Uh, it's, it, it's along with uh, potatoes and Uloco and Mashu are some of the primary crops that they would have uh, used back then. The nutritional content of this is similar to a potato but it has half the calories and um, it is uh, has packed with uh, vitamin A, um, vitamin B1, B1, B2, B3 and B12, phosphorus, zinc and iron and um, quite a nutritional little uh, tuber and we I'll show it to you in its uh, in its size relative to let's say a potato so this is our uh, potato right here and our uh, oka here and the sweet potato over here and you can see that it is uh, in fact smaller than the than the potato and but it is still a very uh, valuable little crop it's going to be our first time trying it what we're going to do is we're going to plant it at two feet apart. They recommend uh, anywhere from 30 centimeters to uh, 90 centimeters, which is a big variance. But I'm going to go on the larger side of that. And the reason be, being is that I believe that it will give me the best chance of having the largest tubers to have it, having it uh, let it grow with uh, less competition and thereby uh, giving it the maximum amount of opportunity to grow. There is two fields of thought also on water. You should uh, mold the, the oka or uh, to leave it be. And uh, you would, whereas it would be critical to mold potatoes to have a, a better yield and to have a, a more a better crop that is not uh, affected by the the sun and uh, in the case of the potato they would turn they could turn green and the flesh would be green and they would be poisonous but the oka does not have that problem um, the oka is can grow up to they say about two feet which is something like that off the ground and uh, two are possibly even more and something similar or maybe a little bit more in width so uh, it's quite of a bushy kind of a plant and it would it's got a clover leaf type of look to it or if you're familiar with wood sorrel it looks a bit like the wood sorrel uh, just a big mound and um, it's supposed to be quite an attractive plant so we will see i'm looking forward to that and we we'll hope to show you uh, videos on the progression there the, you can eat all parts of the oka from the leaves to the stems which they say that they can be used something similar to rhubarb uh, or gooseberries so that's quite interesting in that they're quite tart uh, the one thing with the oka leaves you may want to watch out for again oxalic acid which could be a little bit on the higher side but still far less than something like spinach um, now uh, we are going to do, uh, as I said, planting it about two fo fo feet apart. But um, I'm not just going to plant it. I, I'm going to put a, a, a kind of a tunnel around it later on when the, our, our, our days become more uh, likely to have some frost. And maybe sometime around October or uh, definitely by November, you would want some sort of a hoop tunnel and this is one that we created it's a very simple one it's nothing but a, a, a basically a pipe and my wife did these um, concrete uh, um, weights to just made them out of a, a milk carton something simple but you can make them out of anything and it's the idea is that you weight it down and it will uh, then when you have it weighted down you can connect your individual hoops with a cross hoop little bit of string and um, thereby you have your the nuts of your uh, nuts and bolts of your uh, a mini mini tunnel and you can put simply put a fleece on that and 
make sure that it's secured down and therefore that increases the the number of um, days and uh, weeks that you can have your crop grown before it is hit by a, a hard frost um, and that's the key is when it hits when it's hit by a hard frost then it uh, will immediately send whatever nutrients it has left within its uh, stems and they will go back and funnel into the into the tuber they'll feed back into the tubers uh, but the more that it's the longer that it's grown the better so the earliest with ochre that you want to harvest that is November and if you can go into December better and even longer if it's longer the longer the better uh, because it will give you uh, a much greater har harvest. The thing about oka is it's what they call a, a short day growing crop in that the crop does not actually grow until the days become shorter until we go back in let's say into the round to July from July onwards but it doesn't really take off until uh, September when there's a significant change in the daylight hours September and October and those months and uh, November when they start to uh, form the tubers and um, you'll get increase in yields um, now uh, with the uh, with the maulin of the oka it is um, as I said uh, earlier it is um, it's, there's two fields of thought on it and one of them is that you um, you will have an increase in your tubers if you maul your your okra in the same way that you would mount your potato but the thing to that that's possible also is if you mount it that the plant will take the nutrients that it's use, using that is that is gaining from and it put it towards those baby tubers which may not necessarily be terribly viable um, and they will well while they may be viable the real issue is you may not have the larger tubers that if that you want if you want to have higher quality tubers so uh, there is there's the two fields of thought whether to mount them or not it probably doesn't hurt you know to give them a little bit of, uh, of a mallin and to make sure that they're watered and uh, especially uh, if we're having dry weather um, above 80 degrees they start to uh, struggle a little bit and um, they grow I know they grow particularly well let's say in the Pacific Northwest of the United States and places like New Zealand uh, they're happily growing so we should hopefully do pretty good with them here but we will see what we're going to do is we're going to trial them in a couple of different spots um, now unlike uh, the potato there isn't any um, natural pests uh, for the oka at least not here not that we know about but to be truthful about it there probably will be because something is going to find out well gee this is kind of nice to <laughs> nibble on so let's have a go at it I mean I can imagine if it looks like a wood sorrel it's probably pretty tasty so and there'll be something that will think just the same and uh, but in their home homeland in the Andes one of the biggest problems would be like via different viruses that they may make that they might have I was reading something that uh, in America one issue that they had was wireworms which is an issue we also have here with the potato so I'm uh, aware of that we will see what happens it's not supposed to really affect your your uh, tuber your oka but it just affects the, the cosmetic look of it so it doesn't look as pretty and to be quite fair I, your potato doesn't look as pretty and I don't really like to eat potatoes with the wire worm it's not you know if you can do it without them it's so much nicer and you have a clean crop and um, it's just a matter of trying to control that particular pest in, in the natural means possible uh, so I think we have covered everything we want to say about the oka and we'll keep you posted on uh, how we do with uh, growing it and trialing it. So I want to thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like, please uh, hit the thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. Much appreciated. Thank you everybody that has subscribed. Take care of yourself. God bless and stay safe.